Hi everyone. Uh, in the last few days, we've seen a lot of these influencers penetrate into the minds of the common man, giving out misinformation about E20, the ethanol blended fuel. Over 100 million views in totality have been gathered just in the last 72 hours. That's quite a bit. Now, there is a difference between what is on the script of these influencers and the reality, and that is exactly what I'm here to talk to you about. I've been doing quite a bit of research about ethanol blending and ethanol fuel, and while I was doing my engineering about a decade and a half ago, it was a part of my thesis. So there is quite a bit which I've learned through these years, through my engineering studies and certainly something which I understand a little more than most of these social media influencers which are going on and about throwing millions of views in the name of misinformation. And what the government is perpetuating to the public is also half-baked facts. So as a service to the automotive community, I'm here to bring in some facts to the table for you to understand. Now, what is E20? It basically is 20% ethanol and 80% petrol that's blended together to give a fuel. Most of the cars which were manufactured before 2023 in India are E20 ready. Perhaps a few of them are E20 compliant, but E20 ready means that your car can have a retrofitted uh, flexi fuel kit that would be installed at the workshop. So your car can be, be compatible to E20 fuel. Majority of the cars were still running on E5 and E10. Now it has taken about 15 to 20 years for our country to come from E0, which is the unleaded fuel, the pure petrol, to E10. And all of a sudden, the government is sort of panicking and trying to bring in E20, saying that we want to cut down on imports from foreign countries and, you know, be less reliant on them and more reliant on our own resources. And they also want to push E27 and E30 in the coming months not years months so you have to be very very careful about it now e20 as a fuel is not bad for the cars that are manufactured in the last two years that's 2023 is half 2024 and this half of 2025 because they have been manufactured with the components that are e20 compliant now the cars which were manufactured between 2020 and 2023 were majorly e10 or e5 compliant a lot of manufacturers internally and through various platforms said that they would not be uh, covering the cars under warranty if there is any problem that has happened because of E20 fuel and there is quite a lot of chaos within that ecosystem as well. But any car which is manufactured before 2020 was majorly manufactured as an E5 or E10 ready that they can have an E10 compliant kit, not E20, not at all E30 or E27, what the government is trying to bring. So the cars which can be compliant to this fuel that is now made compulsory in all fuel pumps are sold between 2020 and 2025, which is just five years. So majority of the cars beyond that date would have had problems unless those cars are imported and they've been manufactured as per global standards because in the US and in Latin American markets and some parts of Europe, E30 and E50 were already introduced and most of the components were manufactured with keeping that in mind. Now, there are a few things and few pointers that I would want to bring to the table. Most of these cars are not compliant to E20 that we see on the road. And E20, because of its ethanol content, is susceptible to creating rust or corrosion within the fuel lines, within the high pressure motor and other components which are a part of the combustion system. Also, these 
retrofittings of flexi fuel systems can be a bit expensive depending on what age of car are you driving if it's anywhere between 5 years could be in a few thousands it's above that could be in lakhs henceforth it's a bit of a confusion that a lot of manufacturers are not coming up and telling what is the clarity number 2 is the fuel economy now ethanol by nature has a lower energy density than gasoline gasoline when it was sold as pure gasoline had a high energy density when blended with ethanol the mixture has a very low energy density now this e20 blend is about 33% less in thermal efficiency as compared to the e0 or the pure petrol that we used to get about 5 6 years ago from today and henceforth there is a decline in efficiency as well now technically and on paper the efficiency should decrease by 10 to 12% but i've seen a lot of people claiming that the efficiency has gone down from 20 to 25% which is a huge hit and that sort of increases your ownership cost as well so that is the hit majority of the people will take in addition to the components that are going to be damaged because ethanol over the period of time dries out all the seals the rubber seals the o-rings in your pistons um uh, it would corrode the lines of your fuel line although there are uh, in the fuel tank and in the uh, pump that is there in the fuel tank there won't be any issues but at the filter beyond uh, before the uh, the high pressure pump and the fuel pump and also at the injector level the corrosion can happen at a faster pace so your car would require service every 5 to 6000 kilometers wherein the recommendation was done at 10000 kilometers so that's one case that means you would require to service your car change your oil more often cleaning of your car more often check on your fuel line so your overall ownership costs go up by 25 to 30% now that becomes a huge hit for any middle class person with their finances now that is something to really ponder upon number 3 and something that no one is talking about most of these fuel bunkers are more than 20 30 or even 60 years old and their underground fuel tank which can accommodate 15 to 20000 liters of fuel were not built to take ethanol which is highly acidic so although these fuel bunkers get circulated with fresh fuel every 2 to 5 days but the fuel getting rancid even before getting into your fuel tank that probability is really very high and no one's doing a good check on it so there are quite a lot of issues that are going on when it comes to this e20 fuel scenario which no one's talking about but just going on and about reading the script that the government agencies have given them and not checking the facts before presenting it to the public millions of people are getting fooled e20 can be a great alternative provided each and every process by the government is transparent and tested before it can be used on a longer period of time transitioning from e10 which is already there in our cars right now to e20 and further on to e27 and e30 in a matter of a year year and a half is going to be very challenging for each and every person who drives a petrol car that could also be the reason for the government to boost ev sales and yeah it is all a propaganda what do you think about this entire situation let me know in the comments let's have a discussion i am open to all the questions and all the suggestions that you have after hearing me out thank you for listening and do share this with all your friends who have confusions about e20